going to be in Psalm chapter number 46 tonight. Psalm chapter number 46. We're going to be talking about God our refuge tonight. God our refuge. Psalm chapter number 46 is a great reminder that there is safety in God. God is a refuge. He's a sanctuary. He's a safe place for all of us. Amen. The words and imagery used help us see how God truly is our refuge, just as He was for the Israelites. The reminder is that no matter what you're going through, God is right there with you and will lead you through it. God truly is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we can be still, though all the world around us is crazy. And we can know that He is God, not a God, but the one true God. Amen. The God uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when we realize and we be still and we know that who God is, He'll be exalted to His proper place. So let's read Psalm 46 and then we'll pray. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will, uh, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God can help her in that, uh, that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salem. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the vow. And cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you again tonight for your word. God, thank you for those who uh, came tonight, God, as we study Psalm chapter number 46. God, thank you that you are a refuge. In our strength and God, a very present help in time of trouble. God, help us to be still and know you as God and exalt you to your proper place, God. Help us to realize that you are surely in the midst of us. God, be with us tonight as we study your word and just pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing I want us to look at tonight is the first four words of the verse. God is our refuge. God is our refuge. The word refuge means a stronghold which protects by its strength. For a sanctuary which secures safety by its sacredness, any place inaccessible to the enemy. So when the Bible says that God is our refuge, it means that He is a sanctuary. He's a safe place for us. And it's sacred. Where, where God is, that refuge is a sacred place. And we're protected by His strength. And it, there's a lot of refuges. And we, we think about like... A, like a bird refuge or a wildlife refuge where they bring wildlife from the wild and bring it in, whether it be hurt or something of that nature, and they put it inside this refuge. That refuge is only as safe as those who are protecting the animals, right? And so when we think about our life, our refuge is it's inaccessible to the enemy. And no one can break the walls of our refuge. God is a very present help in time of trouble. God protects us by his omnipotent power. God is all-powerful and there is nothing that can overcome Him. Think about that. The God in heaven, and there is nothing that can overcome our God. And the Bible says that God is our refuge. It didn't say He was our refuge or He might be our refuge. No, God is our refuge. He is our sanctuary. He is our safe place. And we are protected by His omnipotent power. Psalm 62, 7 and 8 says, I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before Him. God is a refuge for us. Say, Lord, God is our refuge. Let we see Psalm 91, verse 2. It says, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge. 
in my fortress. Those, those words pretty much mean the same thing. And the word refuge is a mighty fortress. And so he is not only our, he is our, our fortress, but he's also our mighty fortress, my God. And him will I trust. When, when God is over the, the refuge that, we're, that you're a part of, you can trust him. Nothing can break the bond that is there. You know, what is the application of God being a refuge? I think you know, there, there's some questions that we could ask. Is God your safe place? You know, we talk about a lot in our society we're having a safe place. and We want to have a safe place. If you drive by some gas stations, they have a safe place sign. And that safe place means that it's safe for you to drop off a baby. It, let, let, if you don't want that baby, you can drop it off here. And there's no questions <coughs> asked. And so we think about this word safe place. And, and there's a lot of safe places, right? We have our safe spaces in school where we go and we have an emotional time out or whatever that looks like. But God is the real safe place. He, he is the only safe place. And, and until we find, and, until we see God as our safe place, if we have something else as our safe place, we're resting and trusting in the wrong thing. We can trust in God as our refuge, our safe place. Do you find your safety in God or are you looking somewhere else? What, where do you find your safety? Where do you find your rest? If you find your rest in anything other than God, it's not true rest and you'll be tired. Right? Because, because even though you feel like you're resting, you're still running. But there is no running when you get to Jesus. You rest in Him. When we're in the, in the refuge God provides, the enemy doesn't even have access to us. Think about that. That's a good thing. That even the enemy cannot get to us. Not only is God our refuge, He is our strength. When, when we think about that word strength, it means that He is the supplier of our strength. You know, all of us, if we were uh, to go outside and have a lifting competition, all of us would find our strength somewhere, right? Uh, whether it be uh, really low strength or really high strength, all of us have some sort of strength. But this isn't really the strength that this is talking about. He's talking about the strength to live the Christian life. God is that very strength that allows us to live the Christian life. When we think about the Christian life, it's impossible to, for us to live it in our own strength. We, we can only go so far. And when we, think about, well, when, when we think about God, we can do our best to put on a facade, right? Uh, when we think about that facade, it's like when you go on a movie set, most of those buildings aren't real buildings in the older movies. They're a facade. They're a, they're, they're a painting, and behind there is nothing. And so uh, that is what it, that, that's what we're talking about. We can try to put on a facade. We can try our best to look like everything's okay. But if we find our strength in ourselves, it's not okay. We're not okay. We must find our, our strength in God. That facade only lasts a little while unless we find out the real person behind the facade. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. We can live the Christian life because of who the strength of the Christian life is. It's not ourselves, it's God. And what this, the, the Apostle Paul said, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. All of our strength is weakness compared to God. We can try our very best to, to, to show ourselves strong before God. But if we really dive deep into it, all of our strength is weakness. We are, we are filthy rags. We're, we're dirty, nasty rags that were used to clean up lepers. People. That's what that verse is talking about. It was, those rags were used to clean diseased people. And that's what we have to offer God. But God has so much more to offer us. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. The weaker we are, the stronger He is. Isn't that amazing? We think about that backwards, don't we think? The stronger we can be, the better. No, the weaker that I am, the stronger God can be through me. And we, we, when we're weaker, we make more room for God. Instead of us trying to put us our pride and our ego in front. The application that God our strength. Allow God to be your strength. He is all-powerful and the source of our strength if we allow Him to be. Here's a good question for all of us to answer. Will you stop relying on your own strength and allow God to be your strength? Well, none of us are strong enough to live the Christian life by ourselves. We have to have God on our side. Then we see that not only is God our refuge and God our strength, God is a very present help in trouble. That very present means that He is favorably attentive. He is not heedless, which means careless, but graceful and merciful. God is attentive to us. We think about... When, when I was first dating Jamie, 
I was attentive to her every need. Every, like, she would say, oh, I, I think I need uh, whatever, an ice cream. And I'd, be, I'd drive down to the Dairy Queen and get an ice cream. You know, we're, we're super attentive, right? We, we want to make sure that everything's good. And think about God. God is way more attentive than that. God knows our every need before we know that we have a need. And God is, uh, he is favorably attentive. He's not heedless. He's not careless with it. But he's gracious and merciful. God showed us so much grace when He sent His Son to die on our cross. He showed us so much mercy by not giving us what we deserve, which is death and hell. God is favorably attentive. He sees everything, and yet He still has your best interests in mind. If, if we saw everything about each other, there, there would be some skeletons in the room, wouldn't there? If we knew every single thing about every single person, there would be some skeletons in the room. And we might look at each other differently just as we're humans. But God sees all those skeletons and looks at you the very same as He did even if you didn't have those skeletons. God's a very present help in time of trouble. He is favorably attentive to all of us. The word help here means that which gives assistance, that which contributes to advance a purpose. God is always advancing. He's never retreating. God has never retreated one time. He's never backed up one time. God is always moving forward toward His purpose. And He is the strength that gets us to fulfill our purpose, which is to glorify Him. The purpose of our life is to glorify God. And we do that by fulfilling the Great Commission as a church and by living the Christian life, which is not us living it, but is Christ living inside of us. Deuteronomy 4, 7 says, For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him for? Think about this. What nation is there so great? The nation of Israel has been blessed way more than anyone else. Why is that? Because they're God's chosen people. God is favorable to them, right? And, and when the nations around them would look at Israel, they would say, man, those guys have the favor of God. We'll, we'll, look, we'll read about it in Joshua. But as I've been studying for Joshua chapter number 5 for Sunday, we think about the people that were scared of God because of what He had done for the Israelites. And in, in chapter number 2 of Joshua, they're, they're scared because they heard about the Red Sea. In chapter number 5, they're more scared because they heard about the crossing of the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. And the people are always highly attentive to what God has done for the people of Israel. And just like God is attentive to the people of Israel, He's attentive to you and I. He sees our every need. He knows every thing we need. God is everywhere we are. He's just a call away. And most of the time we miss out on God because we don't ask. Amen? We miss out on God's blessing because we don't ask Him to help us. No matter the trouble or affliction you might face, God is right there with you. And He is your refuge. In 2 Samuel twenty two eighteen, 18, David says this, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me. For they were too strong for me. But guess who they were not too strong for? God. God delivered Samuel from his enemies. When the enemy was way too strong for David, God was right there and delivered him. Application, God is very attentive to our needs. And even when trouble is near, He is there with you waiting for you to cry out to Him. When you cry out, you will find refuge in God. Aren't you thankful for that? Then we see the result of God being a refuge. Notice verse number 2 starts with therefore. That word therefore here means because of. Because God is our refuge. Because God is our strength. Because God is our very present help in time of trouble. There was no fear even when the earth was removed. The word removed means changed. We know that the physical structure of the earth will be changed in the coming great tribulation. The, the, the world is going to change as we know it. The earth is going to change as we know it. In Isaiah 40 verse 4 says, Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. The world is going to change, but we have no need to fear because God is our refuge. Amen? We won't be here for that change. We'll be in heaven. We'll be with God forever. We will be in the great refuge of God. Not only is there no need to fear when the mountain or the earth is removed, there's no need to fear when the mountains be carried into the sea. And think about this. This is more than just a picture. It's more than just an image. This really happened. We think about the flood. 
the, the worldwide flood, the flood that flooded the whole world, so much that the high, the water was over the highest mountain. Everything was submerged in waters. The, the, the mountains became the middle of the ocean. Think about that. And so even when the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, God is right there with them. It not only happened during the worldwide flood, but it's going to happen again in the great tribulation period. Revelation 6.14 says, And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. God is going to tear this world up. Amen? Amen. And the, the world as we know it, we will not know it anymore. God is going to pour out His wrath on the world. That's, that's what tribulation is. It's, it's God pouring out His wrath. Just like God poured out His wrath during the flood, He's going to pour it out again during the tribulation. Revelation 16, 20 says, And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. The world is going to be torn up. But even when that happens, God is still our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Psalm 93 Verses 3 and 4 says, The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Though the waters are roaring and they're troubled and, and the, the, they're crashing into everything around them, God's voice is louder than the waves. God's voice is louder than the thunder that <coughs> that water brings. The Lord is mightier than the waters no matter how much they roar and crash. God is stronger. God controls the water. <coughs> Think about this. The Bible says that God put the water, like he, he made where the waters are supposed to go. He did all of that with just His words. Even when it feels like the boat we are in is surely going to sink, remember that God is mightier than the sea no matter how much tribulation is happening. Jesus showed this in the Gospels, anyone, he told the, the water to peace be still. And the water was still immediately. He showed that he controlled the very waters that they were in. And it says, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, because of the swelling of the sea, the mountains are starting to shake. And even if the disturbed waters cause the mountains to shake, he is there with us. This portion of scripture ends with the word Selah, which means to pause, look back at what had just happened. I believe that they would have thought about the stories they heard about the flood. When the mountains were in the midst of the sea and the world, how they knew it was changed forever. The world changed during the flood. The, the Grand Canyon is a result of the flood. All, we see these canyons and we see these mountains. All of those are, are catastrophic events known as the flood. And all of those were caused by the flood. And so the world as they knew it had changed forever. It was not a soft rain. It wasn't a, a nice little spring rain, was it? No, it was a catastrophic rain. It, it was God pouring out the wrath on the sinfulness of the earth. And yet the biggest theme of the flood they would have thought about is the ark. The ark, which is a picture of salvation, right? It's a picture of God being our sanctuary, our safe place. Noah and his family got inside the ark, and guess what? Though the waters around them were crashing, though the mountains were in the midst of the sea, though the earth was shaking beneath them, God was there and made it, and they made it through safely. It showed them that God is a sanctuary, a set apart place of safety. That while the world was in tribulation, they are in the safety of God's refuge. Isn't that good for us? Yeah. We think about how much of a uh, how much of a mess the world is in right now, and it is a mess. And, and it, it it does no use of us not talking about it, right? And it doesn't help anything if we don't talk about it. If we just uh, out of sight, out of mind, the world is in a mess. Our government is in a mess. Our 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 nation is hurting. And not only our nation, but the nations around the world are are far from God. And there's a great tribulation coming. There's a great tribulation coming, and we don't have to worry about it because we have found our safety, our refuge in God. Amen. And this brings us to the question, where is God? Where is God during all of this? What, what is going on? Where is God? Look at verses 4-7. through seven. It says, There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved, for God shall help her, and that right early. 
The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, he uttered his voice, the earth melted, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Where is God? Anyway, this, there's a river there. Revelation 22, verses 1 and 2 says, And he showed me a pure river of, of, of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on the other side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners, manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There's a river. And it's likely point, this verse is likely pointing to that river found in the New Jerusalem. Right? And so God is, very, is right there in the midst of the New Jerusalem. We think about this. The city of God. It's the holy city. The New Jerusalem. Where the, where the eternal dwelling place of God in the midst of His people will be. The, the eternal dwelling place of God. And guess who's going to be in the middle of all of that God? Just like He's in the middle of all of the things that we face today. He's in the middle of our storms. God is going to be in the middle of that city being worshipped forever. This city is not, in, is not heaven, but it's the coming of God down from heaven, which will be established forever on the renewed earth that Isaiah 66.22 tells us about. Isaiah 66.22 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth will, uh, which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. God is going to be in the midst of that new heaven. And we're going to worship Him forever and ever and ever. In verse 5, it tells us that God is in the midst of that city. God's right in the middle. Zephaniah 3.15 says, The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemies. The kingdom of Israel, even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. When God's in the middle, there will be no more evil. It's going to be a city where no evil could ever come. Think about that. That, that's hard for our finite minds to imagine because there is no safe place on the, on, the, on the earth, is there? There's no safe place. No place that we go can keep the enemy out, but there's going to be a day when, we're, when we see Jesus face to face and there will be no more sin, no more sickness, no more pain, no more hurt, no more physical therapy, right? None of those things are going to be there, but only God and us worshiping Him forever and ever. The mountains will move, they're shaken. It tells us that God will help that city. God is going to be a help to that city. God is a help to us today. God has helped, helps us every day. Verse number 6. It says, The heathen raged, and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. God is going to destroy evil. He's going to destroy the heathen. There will be no more evil. There will be no more hurt in that great city. Verse number 7 tells us that the Lord of hosts is with us. Numbers 14 verse 9 says, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, they are food for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. Think about that. That was a long time before this. And God says when you go to possess, possess the land, the people of the land, they are bread, they are food for you. Right? And then he says their defense is departed from them. They... When God is against them, they cannot win. Their defense is gone. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. God is in the midst of us today. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Then we see verses 8 to 11. The reaction of those who find their refuge in God. But at verse number 8, this is, a, this is an important verse. And I think it's one that we should take into account every day. It says, Come, behold the works of the Lord. When's the last time we beheld the works of God? Not only for us, but for others. Think about what God, behold the works of God. The, the God of Abraham was also the God of Adam. Right? Think about all the men from Adam to Abraham that God was with. And from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, all the way down the line. Behold the works of the Lord. If it wasn't for the works of the Lord, none of us would be here today. Right? If it wasn't for God sending someone to someone to someone to someone who came to me, I wouldn't be here today. But because God is in the midst of all of it, we can behold what God has done. Look what God has done to provide for us. He's provided us salvation. 
He's provided us a home in heaven. He's provided us a refuge. He's provided us safety. Look what he did. He made the earth desolation. The word desolation means a place deprived of inhabitants or otherwise wasted, ravaged, and ruined. God has destroyed the earth. He's made it, de he's made it desolate. He made, wars to, he made wars to cease. Isaiah 2, 4 says, And he shall be judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. War is going to be over. There will be no war in the New, in the new Jerusalem. There will be no war in that holy city. Amen? Amen. He breaketh the bow. Cutteth the spear asunder. Psalm 76 3 says, There break ye the arrows of the bow, of the bow, the shield and the sword and the battle, Salem. God is going to break every weapon. There, there will be no more weapons. There will be no more war. He's going to cut the spear asunder. That means he's going to break it in parts. Then it says that he burneth the chariots with fire. Ezekiel 39 verse 9 says, And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth. And shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears. They shall burn them with fire seven years. Those chariots are going to be gone. There will be no more need for them. Let me see, what should be our reaction? What should, our, what should be our reaction? Verse number 10. A, a verse that's very well known. It says, be still and know that I am God. In a world of busyness, in a world where we just go, 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 there is no stopping. The Bible says to be still, stop, pause, listen. That's hard for us, isn't it? Now, I remember in school, if we got in trouble, we'd have to sit there and be silent. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time being silent. I have a hard time just sitting there doing nothing. But the Bible tells us to be still. Not only are we to be still, but we're to know who God is. How do we get to know God? We read His Word. Amen? We pray. Amen. We ask God to, to show us Himself. And then what happens? When we be still and know that He is God, we exalt Him among the heathen. We exalt Him in the earth. God deserves to be exalted. God deserves to be lifted up. God deserves every bit of praise that we have to offer. The only way that we get to the point where we can exalt Him and lift Him up is to be still and know who He is. Because if, we, if we're just still and we don't know who God is, we don't exalt Him. But when we be still and we know Him, we know what He's done, we know who He is, we can exalt Him among the heathen, we can exalt Him in the earth. Then the psalmist here ends with a reminder that the Lord of hosts is with them. The God of Jacob is their refuge. He's their safe place, their strong fortress. There's no need to fear. And then it says, Selah. Pause and just think about how good God has done, how, how good God has been to us. Tonight, in conclusion, think about these. How do you view God? How do you see God? When you think about God, what comes into your mind? We did, we told you, said, what comes to the mind of you when you think about God is the most important thing about you. How do you view God? Do you see Him as your refuge? Do you see God as your safe place? Do you see Him as your sanctuary? Do you see Him as your strength? Do you see Him as your very present help in time of trouble? <clears throat> if it was to be a multiple choice tonight, and the, the choices were... Uh, God is, and then it said, your refuge, your strength, your very present help in time of trouble. And there's another option, D, all of the above, that's the one to choose. Because God is all of those things. Amen. He is all of the above, and we can trust Him, not only with our life here on earth, but we can trust Him with our eternity. Because God is safety. Amen, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day. I thank you for the psalms that you gave us. I thank you for the song book, God, this great songs about you, and God, just showing us your attributes, and God, just everything about you. God, help us to have the proper image of you. God, help us to see you as a refuge, as a strength. 
God is our, our very present help in trouble. God, because without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we will fail, God. There's nothing we can do without you. God, be close to us tonight. God, be with us as we enter into the prayer service. God, be with all those who couldn't make it tonight. God, keep us safe. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen.